The very fact that we are able to gather in this fashion another morning, God is good. You've been so good. Hallelujah. He has been so good to us. Hallelujah. We thank you this morning. Oh, great and awesome God for being so good. So, 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 so good to us. We give him praise. We give him glory. We give him honor because he has been so good to us. So many doors he opened so many ways he's made so many times he has healed us so many times he has protected us he has been better than good and so we say God you are have been best good best good hallelujah thank you Jesus as you come on kindly like and share like and share just let us do the um our first our first evangelistic for some of us it would be our first evangelistic mission for the day which is to like and share the broadcast god has been so good to us hallelujah we thank you lord and Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the Fort Watch Devotion. My name is Marsha Wade. It is a pleasure to just be in the presence of the Lord with you. Hallelujah. And so we give God thanks for another day, another opportunity. It is now the 27th day of August. August just began and we are at this point already. I would love for you to like and for you to share the broadcast for me please as you come on just do what we need to do our first our first um assignment i give you for the morning hallelujah we like and we share the broadcast so we thank you lord hallelujah he has been so good to us we are starting on a high note this morning starting celebrating the goodness of God this this person who, who sang the song Toby his name is Toby the song that I started off singing he was in his kitchen and at, it was COVID in the COVID season I sense it was the COVID season because that song came out at that time and he was wondering to the Lord what is he going to do you know everything just look like it's going a wire what am i going to do 
and this song just came out of his spirit Lord you are good you've been so good Lord you are good you've been better than good and that song that came from the goodness of God has now over 23 million views on on YouTube and if you know anything about YouTube if you know anything about videos and the amount of um, amount of views you know that persons with a certain amount of subscription and a certain amount of views gets paid and so sitting down wondering what am I going to do Lord what is this happening to me financially and then a song came in your spirit and that song became what we would call viral and out of that viral um, the viral that the song came you were able to be paid so God has so many different ways that he can meet our needs hallelujah he's been so good to us this morning hallelujah we celebrate your goodness oh god hallelujah we celebrate god for who he is we celebrate god for how he is we celebrate god for why he is hallelujah kindly like and share as we come on hallelujah we thank you jesus we praise you we glorify your name hallelujah you have been so good to us so 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 good to us hallelujah we thank you jesus hallelujah we thank you jesus hallelujah we thank you jesus and so father god we give you praise for this morning we thank you for who you are this morning we thank you for just sustaining us keeping us throughout the night almighty god and lord we gather here together in your presence where there is fullness of joy and so we come in the presence of god this morning we come at his right hand this morning where there are pleasures forevermore can you imagine that so God requires intimacy and so the fourth watch devotion is designed for that intimacy at his right hand how can you be at his right hand if you are not near to him and so we are at the right hand of God this morning we are at God's power hand this morning we are at, at the hand that is not too short that it cannot save when the Egyptians saw the miracles signs and wonders they declared that is the finger of God and we know that the hand is bigger than the finger and so we are at the right hand of God this morning and so mighty God we draw close to you as you say those who draw near to you you are drawing near to them so we thank you for your presence here father God anything that we have said anything that we have done anything that we have thought mighty God that it is not pleasing unto your name we repent and we renounce it because we desire to connect with you today beyond what we can ask think or imagine we desire the exceeding presence of God the abundant presence of God above and beyond what we can ask we can think and we can fathom and so mighty God in the name of Jesus take my tongue and teach me what to say take our minds and teach us how to think take our skins and teach us how to feel take our eyes and teach us how to see take our ears and teach us how to hear air 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 and teach us how to hear in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth father god we give you praise we give you glory and we give you honor we desire to be hallelujah in your stead in your timetable we desire to move with you this morning in the name of jesus christ of nazareth thank you mighty god 
that it is so and it is done in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of the fortified city, Jesus, the name of Jesus is a strong tower. The name of Jesus is a fortified city. We are in the fortified city this morning and we are safe. We take our families in this fortified city. We take our nation into this fortified city. We take our brothers and sisters in Christ in this fortified city. We take every single person that concerns us in this fortified city and we are safe. Wherever in the world you are, we declare safety is our portion in the mighty the name of Jesus there shall be no incidents there shall be no accidents on the road in the mighty name of Jesus Christ there shall be no air accident in the mighty name of Jesus we shut down every air accident in the name of Jesus we shut down every sea accident in the mighty name of Jesus we line them with the blood of Jesus, the land, the air, and sea. We line it with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth in the name of Jesus. There shall be no freak accident. There shall be no hiking accident. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we shut down every assignment of the enemy concerning Hallelujah. There shall be no untimely death in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak that we are satisfied with long life and the Lord Jesus Christ shows us his salvation. I decree and I declare that because we are at the right hand of God, we are under his shadow. Hallelujah. I say of the Lord, he is our refuge. He is our fortress. He is the God in whom we trust. He is the God in whom Jamaicans trust. He is a, a God in whom America trusts. In God we trust is an America's money. Same way in the name of Jesus Christ. He is a God in whom we trust. Every nation represented on this platform in the mighty name of Jesus. We are standing in the gap for our nation in the name of Jesus the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is upon every forehead in the mighty name of Jesus. The Jesus, 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 Jesus is the Lord. So every knee must bow to Jesus. Every assignment must bow to Jesus. Every incantation must bow to Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak victory. Today is the day of victory in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. L victory. Victory for our leaders. Hallelujah. Victory for our military forces. Victory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Victory because we are declaring peace. 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 In Jesus name thank you mighty God thank you Jesus Christ of Nazareth Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I'm feeling a tightness here in my head. And what I sense is that somebody who just came on. You just came on a while ago and you're having this. Um, it feels like more like tightness in your head. And this is what I am sensing. I am sensing that it's like you come on. And when you come on, you come on. You just come on because I come on sake. You didn't come on with an expectation because you come on with the burden. You come on with a burden. You came on with the burden. So you came on and when you came on my head, just start having this tightness, this feeling, this tightness in my head. But I'm sensing the Lord is saying this morning, if you just release release what you are carrying now because last year this time what you are carrying now was not what you had 
what you are carrying now is not what you experienced last year that means god took care of what was happening with you last year and he's saying to you this morning what about my track record i did it for you last year oh my god as i say last year is like back to school came to me i did it for you last year when you thought that nothing would have happened when it looked like everything was just um does everything just look tight everything just looked tight and and looked like it was not coming through but i came through for you i'm still feeling it i came through for you so last year was taken care of and so you are at this new junction now where you are in another year facing the same situation and god says what about my track record and so as you release just remembering the god who did it for you last year you will see him manifesting in your life this year hallelujah hallelujah receive the peace that passes all understanding every time every morning that you come on this devotion whether it's me whether it's pastor wade always come with an expectancy because you are coming to meet with god just take a look at where you are now and where you have been thank you for that song um, my, um money hallelujah he'll do it again oh yes he'll do it again just take a look at where you are now and where you have been let me tell you if you look if you look at where you have been and where you are now i'm telling you i'm telling you god is more than able god is more than able hallelujah hallelujah you know the other day i was the other day i was just just talking with god talking with god about a particular issue and he gave me perfecting endurance perfecting endurance and so i typed in my phone a scripture the scripture and when i type in the scripture it was james 1 verse 4 but i read from verse 1 to 4 james 1 and this is for somebody this morning verse 1 to 4 and i'm reading from the nlt version and this is me now reasoning with god and god just says perfecting and perfecting endurance and say perfecting endurance but he just told me those two words and then i just type it in and then the scripture came to me because as i say to all of you most of the times sometimes i don't remember where the scriptures come from but god has given us the ability to use google or whatever mean you use to search for information so don't be afraid to use it my dear use it this letter is from james a slave of god and we know when we talk about a slave of god it's not necessarily a slave as in forced to work somebody who's forced to work without pay but somebody who has laid down their life for god so that god can use them how he sees fit just as just just like like how bakra master in slavery time used to use slaves hallelujah used to use slaves as trisha as you came on this morning i just see like somebody stepping up 
And when I saw the person stepping up, I heard the word pedestal. Like somebody stepping up. You know when somebody is stepping up on a pedestal? That's what I heard, somebody stepping up on a pedestal. And that can mean several things, but I'm just going to speak the things that came to my mind. One, when somebody steps up on a pedestal, uh, people talk about getting married, and when you're getting married, you step up on a pedestal. And um, so I don't know what is going on in that area, but because I am married, and because I am, I am, I believe in marriages, and because I want to see people married, and because I know the power of union, and because I know the value of two, hallelujah, and God has given me the gift of the grace of a great marriage, I speak that over your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So that's the first thing that came in my mind. James 1, verse 3 to 4. Number two thing that came into my spirit is elevation. So you know when you say people are step up in a life. So as you step on the pedestal, I speak elevation over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Elevation both spiritually and naturally. Elevation in your job in the mighty name of Jesus. I, I speak doors opening concerning you and doors opening concerning your job in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak elevation in your life spiritually. I decree and declare that whatever it is that God has placed on your heart, whether it's a book that you need to write, Trisha, whether it's a book, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank God that he has already given you the strength to do it. Whatever it is, I don't know why book came, but I say whether it's a book, whether it's a journal, whether it's a conference, whatever it is that God has set in motion for you to do, as you yield yourself, as you become a slave, as James said, as you become a slave, you will see God move in your life spiritually. You are going to be um, marveled Trisha Larmond at how God will move in your life because I see you stepping up. Hallelujah. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so God, I seal it in the realms of the spirit. So it seal it in the realms of the natural. So it is in the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I thank you, Lord, that it is so in Jesus name. Be elevated, woman of God. Hallelujah. And he says he's a slave of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm writing to the 12 tribe Jewish believers scattered abroad. He says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, troubles with school fee, troubles with health, troubles with finances, troubles with whatever, because in this life, we are not void of troubles. Consider it an opportunity for great joy. For your, you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. That was the word that the Lord gave me, endurance. So when God tests your faith, not tempt you, but test you. Satan tempts, God tests. And so it says your endurance has a chance to grow. So God is actually building muscles when we go through things. So let it grow. So that means God is saying, not just up off the, 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 up off the, 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 the process. Don't jump off the conveyor belt. Let it grow for when endurance is fully developed. You will be perfect. That's the next word. Can you imagine? So God puts us through test so that the test endurance, long suffering can be fully grown and fully developed, that means no half right mango, no force right. You don't have to take newspaper and wrap up the mango for it to grow, to ripe. You don't have to put it in heat for it to ripe. It stays on the vine, goes through the thing, 
hand gets fully developed. So not develop part part way, no carbine, like some carbine fruits that we buy sometimes. It looks good on the outside, but when you cut it and eat it and taste it, no taste. Sometimes it is extremely sour, but it looks ripe, but it is not fully developed because they put all kind of something on it to get it to look good in our eyes sometimes it i remember when i used to be at a particular place and i go into the, the the place to buy fruits and when i go in the place to to buy the fruits i have the, some of them nice and yellow and beautifully looking when you slice it and you start to eat is it's like jello no juice no juice in the orange no juice in the mango the, the orange i don't know what are those the 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 the, the, the um the inside of some some the, the, you can literally see each grain inside of the 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 the, 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 the um the orange not fully developed and so god says he will take us out of the test when we are fully developed because he knows that we will be perfect what a god this year lacking nothing isn't that love so god says lacking nothing you see when i read this scripture man the tears just started to flow because this was a rhema word to me so this was just a word i was just praying and just talking with god and the lord gave me two words and from the two words he gave me a scripture so he spoke into my spirit and it touched me very core of my being and he said listen i am perfecting you you will lack nothing after this nothing at all you will lack and so i'm encouraging somebody this morning i'm encouraging you this morning hallelujah god god's test is for perfection satan's tempting is for destruction you hear that god's testings are for perfection satan tempt in is for destruction and so while you go through the test you will be tempted to come off the come off the cycle come off the wheel and so this week i want us to just go through some some um scriptures as the lord will lead us um, I have been, I was, I'm no longer in the book, but I was just, um, just gleaning over the book of Nehemiah and trust me, Nehemiah is such an enlightening book. Ezra, Nehemiah, very, very enlightening books. If you have not read it before, or if you have read it in a, a long time, like me, go back and revisit it because you will get some nuggets in there and some just some empowerment and encouragement in the book of nehemiah and so god's yes god's testings are prefer perfection satan source of destruction and so because of that he will come with something to tempt you and to take you off the the endurance course because he knows that the endurance is for per perfection he knows that the endurance is so that you will lack nothing. And so because he wants you to lack. He wants you to be premature. He wants you to be underdeveloped. He will come with attempting to take you off. Like sometimes God put you on a fast. You know you're put on a fast. You know God is the one who put you on the fast. You are on the fast. And all of a sudden, somebody invited somewhere where food is. All you say, all you say, 
you know right now um on this at, at this moment i am just in a, a, a particular season and so i won't be eating right now why look like say it look like say me have to come up me come out for the fast because me get invited to go somewhere to eat not to say because sometimes god will tell you to eat but you have to consult god first i remember um i was we were on a fast i mean i know let me the holy spirit is moving through my mouth today because somebody need this one the um i was on a fast and while we were on the fast no the next week was going to be the fast and i then we got an invitation to go to a a, a launch of an event at a hotel when we are going to be on the fast for church i said my god man i had committed to god that i am going to go through this season of fasting and then you know fasting builds your endurance because it's like the food smell the nicest when you're fasting the, everything just look most beautiful like you see somebody eating even a dry biscuit dry crackers and the crackers look like it oh my god somebody drinking even a bubble gum sometimes when people eat it the bubble gum it look like it's the nicest bubble gum ever and guys i was invited to the lunch and i was available and i said to you i say i'm not breaking this fast and not breaking this fast and i tell you food came at my table drinks came at my table i said do you have any box so i can take it home i sat there and persons were there sitting around the table and i sat there i said i will not be tempted because i committed this time to god already i will not be tempted and i went through that that period of fight that it was over i left same way go through it left the next day came as pastor ron always said tomorrow will come and i went through that i did not um i did not i was not i did not fall for the temptation not even fruits i did not fall for the temptation i just went through the process and so god takes us through processes through and through testings for perfection hallelujah in the mighty name of jesus christ we thank you lord and so we are going to look at nehemiah 6 this morning everybody nehemiah 6 we are going through nehemiah 6 and wherever there are prayer things that we can pray we will just pray them hallelujah 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 thank you jesus hallelujah thank you oh god for doors that you are opening that no man can close hallelujah thank you for the doors that you close because you love us that no man can open in the mighty name of jesus we thank you jesus nehemiah 6 i'm going to be reading from the nlt version kings and kingdom shalom pass away but there is something about your name hallelujah and so nehemiah was a cupbearer in persia and we we know that the cupbearers were the persons who tasted the wine for the king and so in case it have poison it is the cupbearer just just drop dead can you imagine that so in case the, the wine had poison so the cupbearer was the one who tasted the wine for the king first and then give it to the king and so nehemiah was the cupbearer there were some people visiting persia from judy from judea and nehemiah just asked them you know what are what is going on what is going on <coughs> sorry and when he asked asked they told him boy not not really go on you know because the place is this the place is um the walls are torn down remember the walls were built the temple was built the temple wall was built and now 
they ha they destroy the wall <coughs> sorry excuse me want to find hallelujah oh this is Ezra and so Nehemiah's heart was moved by what he heard that was going on in Jerusalem they destroyed the wall burn it down and so he started praying I asked about the Jews who had returned there from captivity and about all things were going in Jerusalem not Judea they said to me things are not going well for those who return to the province of Judah they are in great trouble and disgrace the wall of Jerusalem has been torn down and the gates have been destroyed by fire and so good morning pastor Wade good morning and so this is Nehemiah 1 now so Nehemiah this was the reason why Nehemiah went to Jerusalem he heard what was going on in Jerusalem he heard how they destroyed the wall he heard his heart was moved he prayed to God he repented on behalf of the Jews he asked the Lord for divine help and protection he asked the Lord for favor the king granted him favor and the king gave him an opportunity um, elevated him to governor so that he can go and rebuild the wall <clears throat> and so now we are in chapter 6 Nehemiah started building the wall in chapter three I think in chapter three in chapter four we saw where Nehemiah faced some opposition to rebuilding the wall and now in chapter six we are going to look at what happened while they were building the wall and so as we are building the walls <coughs> sorry excuse me of our lives and the walls of people's life as we are called to be builders we will see what happens to us and how we are to treat it hallelujah it says Sanballat Tobiah and Geshem and so these men came up against them in chapter 4 so you can read chapter 4 for yourself but I want us to go to chapter 6 so Sanballat you know what Sanballat means Sanballat means silent enemy. That's what Sanballat means, silent enemy. Tobiah, and to the contrary, Tobiah means God is good. So talk it truth now. And Geshem means rain. But the names are not the significant thing right now. It's the actions of these men. So Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem, the Arab, and the rest of our enemies found out that I had finished rebuilding the wall, that no gaps remained, though we had not yet set up the doors in the gates. So they find out now. So in the in chapter four, the wall was being rebuilt, and they came now to to um taunt them and mock them and oh dare you rebuild wall. Oh, and they, they they tried to do what they needed to do to get the walls. Um, not built to stop the work then to stop the work and so although they were opposed and all of that they continued the work in chapter 6 now we see that the wall was finished but the gates were not and so so Sanballat and Geshem sent a message asking me to meet them at one of the villages in the plain of Ono and when I was when I was listening to the, the, the teaching on this the plane of honor it was a place where normally they would 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 de destroy Jews and so this is where they are inviting um, Sanballat Tobiah and Geshem is inviting Nehemiah to come but I realized that they were plotting to harm me so I replied by sending this message to them I am engaged in a great work so I can't come why should I stop working to come and meet with you 
He said, but I realized. But I realized that means discerning revelation. But I realized that they were planning to harm me. How did that realization come? How did that discerning come? Nehemiah was a man who was connected to the vine. He was a man who was connected to God. And because he was connected to God, God was able to um, reveal to him or God was able to enlighten his darkness. They are inviting me to come and have a meeting. Meet them. Come and have a meeting with us. And he said, but I realize. And so even now, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the discerning spirit. To discern between good and evil. We thank you, O oh Father God, to discern between words. Discern between smiles. Discern between, discern, O oh Father God, looks. Discern, just like how I spoke about the mango. And sometimes the mango is so yellow, but the mango is carbine mango. If I discern properly, I would have known that this mango is not good mango. It feel like mango. It look like mango. It even smell like mango. But it is not good. Sometimes it's experience have to teach us that. After we meet with the mango. But in this case. Nehemiah didn't want any experience. Nehemiah said I discern. I realize that they wanted to harm me. So I, I sent them a message and said, listen, wisdom of God now. And so God, we thank you for discerning this morning in the name of Jesus. We thank you like the sons of Issachar, they understood the times and the season. And know which course of, course of actions to take in every situation. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you mighty God. From Issachar, men who understood times and season. That is First Chronicles 12 verse 32. Sons of Issachar, we are asking God for that anointing this morning. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Some persons to discern whether people who want to join with you. Want to be a part of what you are doing. Want to partner with you. And they come to partner. But their intent is to take and conquer. Their intent is destruction. Their is intent is stagnation. Their intent is to leave you high and dry. And so with discernment we can understand. We can know. Some of the offers that we get are so nice. Some of the offer, offers that we get for another job or another school or something. It's lovely. But that will take you out of place. That will take you off course. We need to learn to discern. Some of the offers that we get. Will take us out of purpose. Some of the offers that we get. Some of them go down on their knees. And God is saying not this one. God is saying not purpose. God is saying don't go. Don't do it. Some of them. Engagement ring is on your finger. And God is saying. You feel it in your spirit. Say this is not the one. You are uneasy. Uneasy. You're just uneasy so. Uneasy. Red flag here. Red flag there. And some of the time you don't even see the red flag. But your spirit check in. Tell you that something not right, man. Discerning. And so we ask God for a downpour this morning. An outpouring of discerning. So we can realize. And we ask God this morning for liberal wisdom. Hallelujah. 
He said, this, if any man lack wisdom, if any man lack wisdom, James 1 verse 5, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask. And so this morning we are asking you for the wisdom, oh God, to put into motion what we realize. Because sometimes we discern, but without the wisdom, everything crash and fail the same way. Because without the wisdom, we create enemies with what we discern. Without the wisdom, we run some people. Without the wisdom, we burn bridges. And so God, as we get the discernment to understand that this one is not the right one right at this moment. Give us the wisdom to execute it. Notice that Nehemiah said, I am doing a great work. A work may I work. And a chicken may I jerk. He did not trace them. Go where go on where go. Go away. Move from here. I don't want you here. The Lord show me you. The Lord show me you're like a backbiter. The Lord show me all your wicked. The Lord showed me that you are a backbiter. The Lord showed me that you are wicked. The Lord showed me that your intent is not good. And that bridge destroyed forever. That bridge that sometimes the Lord said, I will make your enemies bless you is destroyed forever. The same person, you know, just for now, is not supposed to be in your life. But God send them come help you, even with them intent. They become your divine connection. But because of the revelation now, we can, if we do not use wisdom, destroy a bridge. And so we thank God for wisdom this morning so we can execute what, we, what is revealed. Liberal wisdom. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Four times we are at verse 4. Four times they sent the same message. And each time I gave the what? Same reply. What a persistent and persistent they sent in, I want to meet with you. God said no the first time. I want to meet with you. God said no the second time. I still want to meet with you. You think say, Satan easy? Satan persistent. That's why we must be persistent with God. Satan went to Jesus, Matthew 4. Went to Jesus three times. And Satan upsides with Nehemiah because he went to Nehemiah four times. Upsize, they call that. He upsized the fries. He went with the same argument four times. Because one of these times, man, you can imagine all oh, the way how oh, they put their words together. How nicely they said it. How enticing they may have put what they were saying to Nehemiah. When they realized that it didn't work the first time, they amplified what they were saying. I'm sure they did not threaten him because threatening would have unveiled the enemy. They would have they must have said what they have said to him in such an enticing way that one of these times Delilah did it to Samson and he broke. She did the same thing to Samson and he broke. And he said, All right, all right. This is where my strength come from. So Delilah sauce him down and spoke to him you see you see you don't love me and she come back you don't love me i can't believe and she come with her nice up nice up and then samson broke and so when the enemy continues to knock god said no god said no again no keep the confession keep the confession 
He used the same story a different day. Keep the confession. And so Nehemiah, we are at verse 4. The fifth time. So Nehemiah said, I gave the same reply four times. The fifth time now, Sanballat's servant came with an open letter. So they said, okay then. What I am, the message I'm sending you not going to work. All right, let me try a different method. So number five method now. What a persistence. A letter in hand, and this is what it said. So we ask God to give us the strength to endure so that we can keep our confession. The enemy is after your confession. And you remember your confession is with your mouth or with your body language. What would have been Nehemiah's confession if he had gone? Okay, I yield. That was what he was saying. He didn't have to say it with his mouth. He, could, he would have said it with his action. What was his confession? I am not coming nowhere. I am working, working, working. I am working and it is a great work. I am not coming. And he said it with his mouth. He also said it with his body language. He did not move. And so when they saw that whatever they tried, one, two, three, four times didn't work, they tried the fifth. And so, Father God, help us to be steadfast and help us to be immovable. When the enemy knocks one time, two times, three times, let, let, let us be like Jesus. Let us confess that it is written. Let the word be upon our hearts. Hallelujah. So we will not sin against you by saying yes. When you told us no the first time. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Be steadfast. Be immovable. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15 58. Be steadfast and be immovable. Be steadfast and immovable. Don't move. Because he is coming again at you. But keep your confession. God prophesied a word to you. You see the word. Um, the word don't come to pass yet. And there comes the enemy with the pain. God tell you say you're healed already. God says you are healed. Here comes the enemy. The pain gets hotter. The pain gets even hotter. Get even hotter, just like what um these these people were doing. But upon that confession that you are healed, touch the pain again and say, "I am healed in the name of Jesus Christ. I am healed in the name of Jesus." I'll take the pill and say, "You're healed." Same way, I decree and declare that this these pills are the body of Jesus Christ. I declare and declare that the water that washed down this field is the blood of Jesus Christ. I am healed. And when the pain gets utter, I am healed. Keep the confession because the enemy is after your confession. He wants to break you. He wants to break you. And so, them come with letter now. They came with a letter. This is what the letter says. There is a rumor among the surrounding nations. And Geshem tells me, so Geshem is part of them party, you know. And Geshem tells me it is true that you and the Jews are planning to rebel. You're planning a coup to rebel. And that is why you are building the wall. Mm-hmm. According to this report, you plan to be the king. Mm -hmm. Think I don't know that? We know. We're here. We're here. He also reports that you have appointed prophets. Mm -hmm. So you appointed the voices of God in Jerusalem to proclaim about you. Look about you. And this is what the prophets are saying. Look, there is a king in Judah. 
Because they know that prophets are mouthpieces of God, right? And you know that prophets make announcements. So they are now saying to Nehemiah, Yes, we know that you are planning to overthrow the king. And you are also planning to... You and prophets have planned to prophesy that they are kings in Judah. What is this? This is what you call... We know it's lie, but this is a conspiracy against your name. This is a written ordinance against your name. That is false. To tell lie on you, destroy your reputation, destroy even maybe your life, destroy you, make you lose your job. But there is a scripture that talks about written ordinances. Let us go there. Um, Colossians 2.15. Let me check. 2.14 and 15. And so they came now. They came now with them bug. A lie. Okay. So let me start with 13. Colossians 2, verse 13 to 15. Some of you are facing it. Some of you are facing it at work. Some of you are facing it at church. Some of you are facing it among friends, groups, people, planning up, lying. Okay, so let me start with Colossians 2, verse 13. It says, you were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive in Christ. So you are alive in Christ and he forgave your sins. Listen, he canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. And so, this is how I'm going to pray this. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I thank you that every written audit ordinance, every conspiracy theory that has been written against our life, that has been spoken against our life, is destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You cancel every record. And I decree and declare that every record against us is canceled. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every negative record. Every record that is up on your boss table right now with your name on it. Every evaluation that is written in order for you to lose your work that is a lie. Every lie that is written on an evaluation form in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare that it is destroyed. It is destroyed. It is canceled. We speak cancellation. Cancellation. Every conspiracy. Every gossiping. Um, gathering. Every gathering to destroy friendship. Every gathering to destroy partnership. Every gathering to destroy um, your, your reputation, your name. Every gathering to destroy you. Everything, some of them is written and some of them is word. And we know that bad, bad things fly fast. As soon as you tell one person this, it go to that person, that person, that person. And all of a sudden, your name is across, across the company. Or your name is across even nations. As a result of a written ordinance or a spoken ordinance. But in the mighty name of Jesus, we declare the clarity is blotted out right now. Destroyed by the fire of God. Destroyed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Second. Um, Colossians 2. Verse 14. Colossians 2 verse 14. You can be very sure. We are at. I'm continuing. That this report. And that's your confession. Remember we are doing confession this month. So you confess the contrary. And when you use the word. It is quick and sharp and powerful. So the word is so powerful and potent that the word eat it, eat the assignment and hurt it, juke it up. Yes, fill it with holes and then it start to leak. So their bucket of water that they are carrying for you start leaking as a result of your confession. You understand me? 
And so, they come now with written ordinance against Nehemiah. You can be very sure that this report will get back to the king. So, mm -hmm, boss, I don't know. Blackmail them, try for blackmail him. Listen to me. Some of you, it's time for you to get up with your tongue and speak. I suggest that you come and talk it over with me. See them come now. Number five strategy. So if number one, two, three, four never work, this one's supposed to work. Because this one has to do with him trying to become king. And this one will make him be beheaded. Here, here the man who connected to the vine now. I replied. So I confessed. I what? Replied. It came out of my mouth. What is going to come out of his mouth? Let us read. Verse 8. There is no truth in any part of your story. You are making up the whole thing. You hear what I'm saying? Nehemiah said, listen to me now. What you have said is a lie. So, Satan, what you have said about me is a lie. There is no truth in it. And therefore, I receive it not. I cancel that that I am a nobody. I cancel that that I can't do anything. I cancel every condemnation. Because the truth is, Second Colossians Colossians 2 verse 13 tell me that I am forgiven. So that's a lie. That's a lie. Nehemiah said that is a lie. Stand up. Because he was steadfast in God. He was so brave. And so he stood up to them and said, lie, I tell. It's a lie. It's a lie. They were just trying to intimidate us. Imagining that they could discourage us and stop the work. So I continued the work with even greater determination. Listen to me. Hey. So Nehemiah said, you're coming at me. You're coming at me. You're coming with your lights. You're coming with your schemes. You're coming with your plot. I know me have a work. I know, listen, I am going to do the best that I can. I am going to be the best supervisor ever. You're lying on me. You're gossiping on me. You think I'm going to take up my bag and leave? Lie you're telling. I am going to be the best version of myself now. It's no I am going to be what Uno say I can't be. Come God. Just come because Philippians 4 verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. And so, Father God, I thank you for the strength to do what you have called me to do with even greater, greater, hallelujah, results. How many times we get discouraged to the point where we say, you know what, I, I live in this work. I said it to you on Friday. You know what? I live in this church because these people are ungrateful. You know what? I live in this group. You are a leader for a group or something like that. And you know, somebody in the group, a Sanballat is in the group or a Tobiah is in the group. <laughs> Sorry, or a Geshem is in the group. And it, because of that, the whole group needs to be disbanded or destroyed. And so, look at what he said. He did the work with even more intensity. More, he endured it. More determination that, God, I am going to finish this work. Because you are the one who started this work. Whether or not, if I perish, I perish. Who said that? Esther. Because they, they could have gone to the king with the letter the king believed them all of a sudden you see soldiers coming for Nehemiah and all of a sudden you heard that Nehemiah's life was over John's head was because of John's confession John's head went on a silver platter so we see in the bible John's head went on a silver platter because of his confession because of what he said 
So Nehemiah could have gone on a silver platter too. So he knew what he was up against, but he said with greater intensity, I will do it. Because it's God's work I'm doing. Hallelujah. And so, verse 10 says, Later I went to visit Shemaiah, son of Deliah, and grandson of Me Mehetebel, who was confined to his home. That means he was um, a sh maybe a shutting or something. So he was confined to his home. He said, let us meet together inside the temple of God and bolt the door shut. Your enemies are coming to kill you tonight. So another person. So this is number six now. Five never work. Number six now. He's saying, let us go. He's telling Nehemiah, come, come. They are planning to kill you. Come. They are, pl they are planning to kill him the night. So that means Nehemiah is supposed to start panic now. Because he knows that he's getting wind now of their intent that particular night. But I confessed. Hallelujah. I spoke. I confessed. I replied. Should someone... In my position, run from danger? Should someone in my position run from people? Run because they are gossiping? Because they are planning, they are plotting against me? Because whatever it is, your because is. Should someone in my position who is, is someone in your position a child of God position a seated in heavenly place with Christ Jesus position a hear and joint ear position run from demons run as soon as something happens we run the first port of call is to run and, and run and be just like what the world system would do some of the running that we do is retaliation. And what do I mean by that? So, God would desire for us to stand as a child of God in the situation. We stand as a, a seed of Satan that's running away from who you are called to be. So, so the person comes with gossip, you come with greater gossip. The person comes with um, whatever them come with you counteract it bigger bigger you're making more mega and that is why sometimes when you like you see on YouTube you are a believer you're a child of God God says if you find fault with your brother you must go to him and tell him and if him don't pay any attention to you go to the elders and some people have issues with them brother and sister and they come on YouTube and call the name of the person. Tell the whole wide world what the person did to them. How is that God? That is operating as a seed of Satan. How can that be God? And then that goes viral because um, we tend to love gossip. We tend to love breaking news. We tend to love um, X first exposed. This first exposed with exclamation sign. And it goes viral. When it is something that could work out behind the scenes. And nobody knows. That is running from your responsibility as a believer. And running into the area of Satan. Some people is just a counsel away from restoration in their marriage and they run to divorce instead and they did not seek uh, the counsel of God and so that is running away in your position and in your in your call and so Nehemiah said me called a child of God must run away from my responsibility because I am facing this situation right now I must must denounce my my call and purpose because you are gossiping against me because you are plotting to get rid of me from this workplace because you are planning and scheming and trying to break my reputation I must give up God because you 
That's what Nehemiah was really saying. You want to kill me with your mouth? Should someone in my position enter the temple to save life? He says, No, I, I won't do it. I realize that God had not spoken to him. So he realized again. So there comes another realization. There comes another realization. But that he had uttered this prophecy against me. Because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. So they went in number six now. Sanballat and Tobiah of um, um, hired him to call Nehemiah. No, Nehemiah went with him. But Sanballat and Tobiah said, Carry, tell him about the temple story. And he said, I realize again. Lord, enlighten my understanding. Let me find that scripture. May the eyes of our understanding be enlightened hallelujah jesus we thank you ephesians 1 18 and i pray this morning that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened flooded with light of the holy spirit so that you will know hallelujah and cherish the hope the divine guarantee the confident expectation to which you are called we are called so god opened the eyes of our understanding this morning i hope you are writing down the scriptures ephesians 1 verse 18 we need it guys i'm telling you we need it six time now them going after nehemiah over wall wall wall, wall six times now they are going after nehemiah because first they heard that there was somebody that is in this chapter six but i'm going back there was somebody who is going to who god has called to do some building and some refixing and so god called you in your workplace to do some rebuilding and some refixing to change some some trajectory of how the company going God called you in the church and he gave you a gift and the gift is supposed to be used and God called you whatever but because you are called to make a difference because you are called to change lives because you are called called to activate people because you are called to build because you are called to restore to renew people as a child of God just remember your position as Nehemiah said should someone in my position because of why you are called is why you are fought so hard the mission that you are about to accomplish in this place in this life this life of this person and so if your reputation can be tarnished before you get to the person that would be very good if it is that your reputation can be tarnished so the person turn off from you some of them all turn off them phone turn their phones off they don't want in and not talking with you anymore da, da 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 he will do that and so he realized and recognized that it was another was another scheme they were hoping to intimidate me and make me make me sin hey you remember what you remember i talk about you remember i said to you that sometimes our retaliation is is not us standing in the same in our rightful place they were trying to intimidate him to make him sin what does sin mean sin means going against god's will and purpose and so whenever we say something as a result of retaliation do something as a result of retaliation be something as a result of retaliation think something as a result of retaliating all if we just come up in our heads the bible tells us about sinning even if it is a thought and so they desired for him to sin listen then they would be able to accuse and discredit me so they wanted him to sin so the door can open nehemiah was so wise 
And so, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come against every spirit of intimidation. We decree and declare Isaiah 41 verse 10. We shall fear not for you are with us. We shall not be dismayed for you are our God. We call upon you this morning for your strength. Hallelujah. We call upon you this morning for your help. We thank you mighty God that you uphold us with your righteous right hand this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty God. You did not give us a spirit of fear this morning. Hallelujah. You did not give us a spirit of fear. Hallelujah. But you gave us power. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hey, God. Second Timothy 1 verse 7. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but he gave us power. Power. Power over the enemy. Power over every plan. Power over every scheme. Power over our emotions. Power over our emotions. Because it's our emotions make we want to take up a bag and leave. Is our emotion make us want to leave? Is our emotion make us want to run and hide? Power over our emotion and the love for God which God has given us. Hallelujah. Morning, Tracy. Good morning. It's the love for God. And his will and purpose. Nehemiah loved God. And Nehemiah said, I am working. I'm not coming anywhere. So we see Nehemiah demonstrating God's love, power, and also self-control. And so we come against intimidation spirit. We come against the spirit of fear this morning. And intimidation. And anxiety. Coming up with all kind of things in our heads. That is not so as a result of what we get wind of. Information that we get wind of through, um, through, through whether it's through discernment or whether it is told, by, told to us. And so mighty God, we thank you. And we receive your gift of power, love and self-control this morning. And then Sanballat did what we are always to do turn to God because he was so connected to the vine so connected to the vine I think it's John 15 talks about being on the vine which is Jesus Christ and so Sanballat hear me Sanballat Nehemiah turned to God and said remember oh my God all the evil things that Tobiah, Sanballat have done. And remember, Nodiah the prophet and all the prophets like her who have tried to intimidate me. That's his prayer. Say, God, I put them in your hand. I put them in your hand. So we don't do back to send a prayer. We don't do back to send a prayer. We we'll put them in God and say, remember them, God. The Bible says, vengeance is mine. I will repay God. I give you them, you know. I give you this person, you hear about them, and you love them anyhow. You give them that, give God that person, and you love that person anyhow. You give God that person who hurt you, and you love God that person anyhow. You give God, just give them to Jesus. Anybody have some people to give to Jesus this morning and say, God, remember this person. Don't write their names in the chat. Just give them to God this morning. Lord, remember this person. Please and thanks, God. Like Nehemiah. And then just release them off you. Take them off you. So we're releasing people this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh my God, I didn't remember my communion. Verse 13. So on October 2nd, the wall was finished. Just 52 days after we had begun. When our enemies and surrounding nations heard about it, they were frightened and humiliated. They realized this work had been done with the help of our God. That's the end result and that's the better testimony. When you stand up for God, God will stand up for you 
and the enemies will see the table set before you. When the enemies heard that the wall was finished, irrespective of all that they went through, they were so frightened and they recognized that God is with them. That is the better testimony. And so in the position that we are in. In the position that we are in. We must desire the better testimony. If we act like Virago, We lose the battle. If we act like Jezebel. We lose the battle. If we act like Herod. We lose the battle. If we act like Nehemiah, we win the battle. And ultimately, if we act like Jesus, we win the battle. But since we are doing Nehemiah this morning. And so look at the lifestyle of Nehemiah and look how he approached things. Look at how he approached people. And look at the better testimony. He persevered. It was perfected in him. He lacked nothing. What happened? The people started to see. Nobody could say, What a man. This man says he's a man of God. And look at how he sinned. He hear the bad words that he cursed after us. He wrote us a letter calling us everything that is wicked and evil and sinful. Tell us about our mother, our father, our sister, and brother. But no. They recognize that they realize this had been done with the help of our God. And so God is saying this morning to all of us, I am your help. And I just prayed it, Isaiah 41 verse 10. I am your help. Allow me to help you today. Allow me to help you with this situation. Allow me to help you Whatever it is that it is. God says I am your help. All of my help come from the Lord. My help. My help. All of my help come from the Lord. Even if your help comes through people, God uses people. During those 52 days, many letters went back and forth between Tobiah and the nobles of Judah. For many in Judah had sworn allegiance to him because his father-in-law was Shechaniah, son of Ara, And his son Jeho Anan was married to the daughter of Meshulam, son of Berechiah. They kept telling me about Tobiah's good deeds and then they told him everything I said. And Tobiah kept sending threatening letters to intimidate me. All through the days that they were building. They made sure they seek, they sought people to be on their side that carry clout, carry weight. And so when you know that you are up against a certain person. It will make you want to bow. Because boy, if I am coming up against my supervisor, I might as well have bow because if I don't bow, because of what they, they, the status that they have, I may lose my job. But God says this morning, your help is in him. Don't lose what God is about to give you, a finished product that will marvel up to your very enemy because you bowed listen to me guys i'm going to leave a testimony with you and because time is up and then i do the, the, the this the um the thing the communion and so the other day i was supposed to do a particular transaction in Jamaica that particular transaction 
If you know somebody, you don't need to go to the place to get it done. You don't need to get no form of inspection. You just know somebody, pay them a little thing, and they give you, give you the papers. I got that offer to do that. And I said, I am not doing it. And let me tell you something. The offer came again for me to do it. And I said, I am not doing it. This is how the offer came the third time. You're not really, it's not really that you are doing something wrong, you know. But remember, you know, and my, my brethren, and my brethren know how to get the thing done. And it's not that you are doing something wrong. The gentleman are just do the thing for you, save you from go to the X place. We have to stay in long line and all of that. And just get the thing done. So it's not really say so I do something about it, you know. I just get me and get my friend. If you do a favor for you. I said to the person. You know me. I am not going to do that. If it is that the thing that I need. Will not be inspected. And the person is going to give me a document. To say I saw it. That is not right. I am not going to do it. And that's where I left that. You hear what I'm saying? Things will come to make you bow. Sometimes the bowing is to is it it feels like it's for your own good, Yago Bow, because it's going to save your time, effort, energy. But don't sin. And I when I came home, I said to my mother, I said, Mommy, can you imagine me must lose my breakthrough because me don't want to stay in a line? Me must lose my breakthrough. Me must deceive the system of government. Because I don't want to go in line and make just give a man a money a man pass me. Talk it through now. Me must lose my blessing. Suppose God come when both of us doing the transaction. Straight L me go because me never want to go in a line. I didn't want to go into the line. Talk the truth now. And so I'm saying to you this morning, let us remember our position. Jesus remembered his position. That is why he never yielded to the mockery, the accusation. Didn't they do the same to Jesus? They call him King of the Jews. Didn't you say you're King of the Jews? And they made the, um, the crown of thorns and jam it on his head. <coughs> Hallelujah. Mommy, can you pass my communion, please? They made a crown. They did the same thing. Tell him, say, I want to be king. But Jesus set his face like a faint. Flint. He was steadfast and he was immovable. He remembered his position. He remembered why he came. He remembered his purpose and his position. And he stood his ground. And he took the position of death. So that we might have life more abundantly. And so this morning we celebrate jesus christ who is lord who is the builder of every builder the one who took away every written ordinance everything from our past everything that people know we were known for hallelujah mash up when jesus said yes to his position listen to me everything some people who from your childhood know that you once were that. It has to be a once were because Jesus went on the cross. And so we thank you this morning, God. Hallelujah. For going to the cross for our sake. We lift these emblems and we say, can we consecrate them unto you this morning. Sanctify them as we eat and as we drink. We thank you. We are eating and we are drinking in thanksgiving that Jesus stayed in position so we can be in position in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth so i say to you this morning hold your position hold your position hold your position in the mighty name of jesus children of god hold your position in jesus mighty name eat and drink Celebrate. Mm, mm. All your position. 
Take your position. Hey, we are the one. Chosen one. Hold your position. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Dream. Hold your position. Take your position. Hey, what a mighty God we serve. We thank you, Lord. It is done in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We confess from our position. A child of the king. Hallelujah. Go forth and have an amazing, fantastic day, children of God. We will sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. We will sing it one time. Hallelujah. Give God a hallelujah. Just send up the hallelujah. Send up the hallelujah. Send up the hallelujahs. Send up the hallelujahs this morning. Have an hallelujah day. Give God the highest praise. A celebration day. Today we shall celebrate. Hallelujah. Because we know our position. On behalf of Pastor Rowan Wade. I am Marsha Wade. Saying all your position. Hey. Take your position. Hey. Because you are the one. I am the one, we are the ones. Eh. Hold your position, eh. Take your positions, eh. Cause you are the one, I am the one, we are the one. Eh, eh, eh. Glory! Bless you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Bye, everybody.